When I was a kid, uh, it would have been in 1967 through 69, I was seven to nine years old. Uh, I watched a man named Gene Cromer run his A-Gas Willis Spartanburg Greer, and uh, it was just, that was my favorite car because he won all the time. You know, as a kid, you're gonna pick the car that wins, and then when you go home and you play with your matchbox cars, you, you, you pretend to be Gene Cromer. And uh, so, time, you know, 40-some years goes by, and I never met the man, but I saw him at the races, and this and that and others. And, but you know, I was a kid, and I was scared to go up and try to talk to him, so I start trying to track him down. I find out he's still living. He's 80-some years old, but he's still living. Well, I, I finally track him down, and come to find out he still had the car. And that, to me, just blowed my mind. He still got this car that I watched as a kid, but it was a basket case. It had been stripped apart, parts been sold off of it, and it just wasn't much left of it. And uh, I just, it broke my heart to see that sitting there that way, so I decided, and it took me a lot of talking and coaxing, but I talked him into letting me put the car back together and, and put it back to the, exactly the way it was run in 1967, I think is pretty much what we hit the era. <laughs> The way I met Gene, finally, the way I finally tracked Gene Cromer down, believe it or not, was through Facebook. And uh, I mean, it was odd that a man his age would have been fooling around with computers, but he was always ahead of his time. So he's still, at, at, even at 80 years old, he's still fooling with stuff that keeps him up to date on what's going on. And uh, I found him. And I think at that point, I found his phone number, maybe in the phone book. And I had a video of his car racing in the 60s. So I, I called Gene up, uh, introduced myself, told him I was a big fan of his. Uh, you know, years and years ago, I, I told him one time, I said, and somebody asked me how long you've known Gene Cromer. I said, well, I've known Gene Cromer for over 40 years, but he ain't known me but about three. So anyway, I, I got to talking to him and uh, I told him I had this video, and he said, well, I'd love to see that. He said, I don't have much video or pictures, because we didn't do that back in the day. And I said, well, I'll let you see the video under one condition. And he said, what's that? I said, I get to hand deliver it. So he, he agreed and told me where he lived, and I, I went to his house and showed him the video. And at that point, he finally said, well, I've still got the car. And that's when he took me out in the building and showed it to me. What did you think when this guy said, I've got video of your car and I'm only going to let you see it if I have to deliver it in person? What did you think about that? Well, I thought it was great. I mean, I, I couldn't believe that he had, even knew me, you know. And he called one morning and told me he had that video. He wanted to come down and see me. So I said, all right, come on. And he was there the next day. Yeah. And then we got to talking, got to be good friends. And then in the meantime, he built his Willis, and I went with him to pick up the body, and I watched it go together, and then he decided he wanted to do mine. Cromer rolled that door up on that old building behind his house and there set the moonlighter. I, it was, words can't describe how that felt that day. I'm like, that's the car that I watched and worshiped when I was a kid. And uh, at that point, I started begging him to let's put it back together and get it back. When I started putting this car together, everything was gonna be exactly as it was in 1967. And I was so anal about it till a lot of people got mad at me. And I think Gene even got aggravated at me a time or two because I wouldn't let him do anything any different than it was. And then he tells me he might be gonna run it some. So at that point, I did go ahead and agree to put a, a full roll cage in it. But I, I spent hours upon hours bending these bars to where they were hid in the car where you can't see them. So that's the only thing. And I had to redo a lot of the sheet metal because it was, uh, it was, you know, old and cracked up. And I had to move the seat back a couple of inches because Gene's older now and he couldn't crunch up in there and get to the pedals. But I've, every piece of metal that I trimmed off of that car where I might've had to cut to put the roll cage in, I've saved it. I've got it all in a box 
Uh, I still have every piece of the car that I took off of it that we couldn't use over. Uh, the seat covers, Gene still has them. We had to make new covers because they were all cracked up. And, uh, but I, I, I wanted the car exactly like it was and they, I just I wouldn't deviate away from it any kind of way. So Quain tells me you guys had some dis serious discussions on how the car should be done. Well, a few, not a whole lot. He knows a lot more about it than I do, I guess. I knew I know how I used to run it. What What were some of the things that you guys differed on? Well, the height and a few things like that. And, uh, Really, I don't, not a whole lot, but just, I guess I should have a shovel engine for playing instead of forward. <laughs> Me and Gene, we got in a few little uh, tough discussions on the car. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you'd call it arguing or not, but we, we disagreed on a few things that we wanted to do. Nothing comes to mind right now, but there were several things that I wanted to do the old way, and Gene wanted to make it a little better. And and in you know in the long run, he was probably right. We 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 compromised on most little things like that, like the roll cage, and uh, the old the old seat covers. I'll tell you one interesting story. They was going to auction off one of the seat covers on on eBay, and I got wind of it, and I said no 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 no. That seat cover is going nowhere. They was going to auction off the driver's seat cover, and I said no. That that old seat cover is just because we ain't using it back in the car. It's it'll never be for sale. I said I'll buy it myself. If I have to give a thousand dollars for it. That seat cover stays with the car. Greer, uh, the shock, I guess, had done wore off of it for me because I built the car, I spent all this time. Then it went to Gene's house and he had the guys paint it and do the interior. And, and Gene built the motor himself, him and Melvin Kraft. Melvin's the guy that was with him all those years racing. So they put the motor together. They had the car painted, uh, upholstery done. A lot of little stuff, and I went back and forth to Gene's house. I would think I worked another 40 hours, not counting driving time, going back and forth to his house. And so by the time we unveiled it, it was a real, real honor for me to be there and know I had a part in it. Uh, it, was, it was like, I don't know how to describe it, but it was more for Gene than it was for me. I think the, 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 to see the thrill in his eyes when everybody got to see that car for the first time, and it, it just meant so much. 